Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever. We're going to get a lot of work done in this episode, so it is a pleasure to bring you along. I hope you enjoy. You'll remember in the last episode, we took this 5,000 year old piece of bog oak, we drilled two four millimeter holes down it, ready for us to broach out a tang hole. Well, we've got ourselves an issue. That doesn't fit. This doesn't fit. So we got ourselves a problem that needs a solution. Thankfully, when we need a tool, we like to make a tool. <laughs> Look at that, it's only gone and worked. Aside from the fact that my heat treat was clearly terrible because it's already bending, I need to redo that. <laughs> but what I need this for is just to open this hole up enough so this, oh, yeah, no, this definitely needs to get fixed right now. There we go, that is a lot better. <gasps> that is hogging away material like nothing. So I'm gonna start broaching with this, then we're gonna switch over to this. I'm gonna flip it around, do the other side, and hopefully we're gonna have ourselves a nice hole that is gonna fit perfectly on that tang. Ahem, 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 yeah. Whew. Three hours to make a one-use handle brooch. Yep, it snapped, but we're okay, because this handle saw now fits in, and so we can use it. So that is looking good, and it is nice and tight. So now that this fits, I need to think about the actual design of the handle itself. I have already thought about this. I've seen some swords where they have the handle taper in, like an hourglass, which I think looks good, but we have a rather thick tang on this particular piece, so I don't think we'd be able to do that. I don't think straight up and down would work either. And so, just like on the falchion that comes out and in, out and in, that's exaggerated. That's, that's, that's very exaggerated. Out and in and out and in. But of course the risk is that we make this in such a way that it looks weird, it isn't straight, it is twisted in the hand. When on this one, we're just trying to make this straight instead of putting a twist like we did on the falchion, which means that I'm gonna put this back on the sword and measuring off of the blade itself and how the blade sits, I'm going to scribe myself some center lines to work to. And then we're gonna be able to grind and shape this handle. So this is where it stands. It fits. We've got some very nice scribe lines to work to, but notice how, of course, those scribe lines are not square to the block that we made. That's completely fine though. We're gonna work to the scribe lines. That's how the handle fits. We have a central scribe line, and then we have some scribe lines that are stood off a little bit. And so this is gonna be very, very interesting to continue working on. I just got notice from the assay office that the pieces are processing. So they've arrived. I had been hoping they would've got there a little bit sooner. Today is Friday, it's the weekend, which means that I'm gonna get these things back here on Monday. That's all right, we're just gonna play the waiting game a little bit longer. But what I'm not gonna do, is go any further on this handle block until I have the rest of the pieces here. Because I know that's just gonna be, that's, that's just a mistake waiting to happen, even with the scribe lines there. It's a few days later, the parcel is back. It's time to open it up and see how our hallmarking looks. Here's piece number one. It looks in good condition. This should be the upper guard. It also looks good. This is where we see it. Oh yeah, that is cool. There is our laser etched hallmark. So with that looking beautiful, I can now stack up my lower guard, the bog oak, and the upper guard, and we can have a look how it looks. I think the color works extremely well, but we have a slight issue, which I think we can resolve with how it is that we sand the end of our bog oak handle, in that we have a slight little bit of air in the way the tang sits in the wood, a slight little bit of air on one side, so we're gonna have to sand this bog oak more on that edge. But sadly, there's one thing that I've just noticed, and that is, when I look down here, that blade sits nice and centered in our groove that we spent so long finishing up uh, just a week or two ago. But in this direction, what I did not do is I did not check to make sure the distance from the edge of the sword to the edge of our chamfer 
was the same. And that just doesn't look good. Because you're gonna look at it like this and you're gonna see about an eighth of an inch here, and then you see about three sixteenths of an inch over there. That's a problem. So regrettably, that means I've gotta fix that after this is all painted and the inlay is looking beautiful and fantastic, so I need to be really careful that I don't scratch what is already finished and pristine and ready to go. This is gonna be difficult, but it's gonna be again at the microscope and again with the pendant drill to hopefully get that all sorted. So much better. So much better. So now at last, we can work on our handle block. We're making progress. This is now at a rough 120 grit. This is looking beautiful. It feels good in the hand too. We wanna make sure that everything is centered and lines up well so that this piece is really finished off looking rather exquisite. And so I'm gonna use my eye to see top and bottom the gap between the wood and the steel. On this side here, on my edge, the wood is a little too high. And so I'm gonna make a mark. X marks the spot where the wood is proud. Turn it over. Okay, and the other side. This side here is proud too. So both of these corners are a little thick. They look about right on this end. And just as a point of reference, look how stunning this is going to look. So I came out here so I could use the, uh, the light of the day, nice soft light to have a look at this and make sure that the handle is nice and centered and it looks good to the eye and that we've got a good baseline. I'm having a look at it like this. I'm giving it the, old, uh, the good old Scottish eyeball. I pass it to Jamie uh, for him to have a second opinion, get his eye on this. And I'm like, okay, it looks good. Let's see what somebody else thinks in case they spot something I don't. Jamie gives it a good look, gives it a good look. He says, what about this? I am stupid beyond belief. Beyond belief. How I did not spot that just amazes me. That gap there. This handle has a lot of time in it. A lot, a lot of time. It took me a whole day to get this thing fitting on there nicely because I'm trying to do as good a job as possible, get as tight a fit as possible with as little, uh, as little problems on there. Spent a good deal of time shaping this today. I didn't account for that. It's looking so good as well. Everything was looking so nice and neat. So that is a real shame because I have to start over on the handle. That was a 5,400 year old piece of bog oak, which was obviously given to me by my friend Siddalaw. So I, I feel very bad about that uh, not being put to good use, especially because the off cut of it is 80 millimeters long. It's just five millimeters short for the handle. So. This is a real shame. It means we can't use bog oak, because I don't have any more. It also means I need to completely start again on the handle, and there is that dreadful scratch, or a dent in the hole marking, um, which is gonna be a big problem, because this is laser hole marking, not stamped hole marking, which means that finishing over it can then damage the hole marking. So I need to be extremely careful. It might require getting it re-hole marked. I hate to think that that's what has to happen. We're gonna work that out in the next episode. We are going to keep cracking on. We're two months into this sword. You know, if we gotta take another week to finish it to make sure that this buttons up and is as perfect as possible, that's what it's gonna be. And so I'm gonna get cracking back on with this Viking sword, get this thing as close to possible as being wrapped up as fast as possible while keeping the standards as high as possible. And I am very much looking forward to sharing that with you on the next episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking through. 
as I make some terrible mistakes and hopefully fix them enough to make this a beautiful piece. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.